We saw in the last video that a histogram can be a useful plot to generate when exploring a data set. Now let's go over how we can create one using Python. We are interested in the fraction of the vote that went to Barack Obama in each county. We can plot this as a histogram using matplotlib.pyplotmodules hist function. We pass it the dem share column of the data frame. We could also have passed it a numpy array with the same data, and it works just fine. In fact, for this course and its sequel, you can use data frames and numpy arrays interchangeably. Note that plt.hist returns three arrays that I am not interested in. I only want the plot. I therefore assign a dummy variable called underscore to them, which is common practice in Python. After creating the histogram, we label the axes. Always label your axes for histograms or any other kind of plot. Otherwise, no one can know what it is that you are plotting. You probably didn't notice, but this plot looks slightly different than the first plot I showed. You can see it if you look at them side by side. They are different because they have different binning. In the plot at the left, we have 10 bins that were generated automatically by the default settings of plt.hist, and I set up the bins on the right by myself. I specified where the edges of the bars of the histogram are, the bin edges, and use the bins keyword argument to pass that to plt.hist. You can also specify the number of bins, say 20, using the bins keyword argument, and matplotlib will automatically generate 20 evenly spaced bins. Now the plots we've made so far are stylized with matplotlib's default settings. I prefer to use the default settings of Seaborn, an excellent matplotlib-based statistical data visualization package written primarily by Michael Wascom. We import it as SNS, as is traditionally done. Upon import, we can get the style to be Seaborn's default using the sns.set function. This results in nicely formatted plots. Beyond this stylistic functionality, Seaborn offers useful plotting functions that we will explore in the next video. But before we do that, let's practice making some histograms with some exercises.